All right. Hello. There's a few more people still shuffling in, but let's uh, get this show started. Um, if you love PHP template, I have bad news. <laughs> uh, we're here to talk about Twig, but not only Twig, also the other changes throughout the theme layer for Drupal 8 to make things better for front-enders everywhere. So we'll just start with the introduction. Uh, my name is Scott or Kotzer. I'm uh, a, just a developer, Drupal developer at Digital Echidna. Just a quick shout out to them for uh, sponsoring me to come here, which is great. And uh, Fabian, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Fabian France, uh, or Fabians on Drupal.org. Um, it's one crazy day I had this idea of uh, that this trick, there was this little problem to solve, and I was like, it wasn't that hard. And suddenly I was together with Jen leading this initiative, but we had success and it's very nice. So um, I'm currently at Tech One Consulting, loving it, and yeah, hope you have fun with the session. Hi, I'm uh, Joel Patet, and um, I jumped onto this Twig project just to help out, and I got sucked in, and it's been good so far, because. It feels a lot better than the PHP template that I used to use. And uh, I'm Jen Lampton. I'm also independent. I've been working on the Twig project for the last year and a half. Um, really hoping it gets everything everyone wants out of it done. So. And a pony. That's pony. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now that you know who we are, uh, why are you here and what is this talk about? We want to talk about the pain and what we have done and what we are going to do to try and take that away and so to give you a better theming experience. So we're going to talk about syntax, inconsistency, complexity, redundancy, and security. And so this is just an overview. So we'll talk about each of these. Um, I think, Jen, do you want to talk about syntax? Okay. Sure. So uh, there are a couple of problems with the syntax in, in, in Drupal 7. Um, for starters, that when you are printing variables in your template files, there are lots of different ways to identify your variables. Uh, if you're printing an object, you print things out with an arrow. If you're printing uh, something in an array, you print them out with square brackets. Sometimes you just print things. Um, and it, it, for people who are experts in HTML and CSS, they shouldn't need to know the difference between an object or an array or how to access bits and pieces of them. And more importantly, they shouldn't need to know which things Drupal decided to make which other things. Um, and it, it's kind of would be nice if we could print everything the same way and let the people who are experts in the template files do what they do best and leave the yucky stuff to the developers. So in Twig, um, we've eliminated the need to print things differently. It doesn't matter whether it's an object or an array or a plain variable. If you want to print it, you just print it. So it um, gets a lot better. Yeah. Uh, there's also different ways we print things in Drupal 7. Uh, sometimes you just print them to the page, and sometimes you have to print render them. Not only is print rendering things a little bit redundant, but it's another one of these things where it, we're leaving it to the front end community to understand when Drupal requires that you render something and when you can just print it, where we really should just be able to print everything the same way. So in Twig, we've made it so that you don't have to render your renderables. You can print them exactly like you print everything else, and Twig will handle the rendering for you. Just print it. Just print it. And inconsistency is another pain point. So many different ways of doing the same thing. Sometimes we use template files. Sometimes we use theme functions. Uh, theme functions are always a pain to override. And when I was learning theming Drupal, um, I thought that it was crazy that you have to take this whole function and copy it into your theme and then just change these little bits. And it also means that you need to know PHP, basically, to change that markup. So in Drupal 8, with an asterisk, only template files are provided in Drupal 8. Um, we're, we're probably going to drill this into your head by the end of this, but we need your help to make all this a reality. So if you're still in town on Friday, please come to the Sprint. Uh, no matter your skill level and experience, uh, you can help, trust me. If, as long as you have built a site in Drupal, you can help us out and help yourself out at the same time. 
So, uh, and also the, just the sheer amount of template files and theme functions, you, we can't even show you them all and you can't read any of these. Um, there's a lot of them and it's, it's just sort of, it's too much, it's too many layers, it's too complex. So we are trying to get rid of them, consolidate them. If they're the same thing, let's just use the same template. But we need your help. And uh, I'll pass this on. This is uh, talking about render arrays and theme functions. Who wants to take that? I can take that. <laughs> um, so in general, we had a very big inconsistency there. Um, in general, most functions in core would already kind of do this. They would create these big arrays um, with a build. And then you would kind of um, have this um, as a render array. But there were also lots of places in core where you would actually call the seam function. And we are actually very close to deprecating that from Drupal, uh, Drupal 8, which means that overall what we can now do is we can do lots of things within the rendering system that before hadn't been possible because we now have one consistent way to call it. So if in your modules you are still kind of using uh, theme calls, start converting them now. That will also help with performance caching, other things. Um, trust me, it's worth it. Yeah, so it's basically, it's taking, it's, it's taking the call to the theme function and convert that to a render way with hash theme equals. And so it's, it's usually a fairly straightforward conversion to this new way. And like Fabian was saying, there's so many benefits. And complexity is another pain point. This is, this is one of my favorite slides because it looks, it looks so evil, look at it. <laughs> so this is pretty much what Drupal 7 looks like. Uh, John Albin Wilkins, who is the, uh, one of the theme system maintainers and was for Drupal 7 as well, uh, sort of figured it all out and created this diagram. And I sort of like to refer to this as the monster that we created. Um, so we're trying not to do that this time. Um, we're trying to sort of think through and Think about the use cases and what people actually need. So, yeah. and there's a ahead. little story to that. Um, when we finally, at the last RubelCon, after five days of extensive sprinting, got Twig at least secured almost in core, the mega patch was ready, it just had to be kind of applied, and it was applied the next day. And I was flying back, Jen and me were sat sitting last in the coding lounge, and we were like, Jack, debating those things anymore. And then we kindly found, well, We've just designed a new seam system in five easy steps, and that's <laughs> it. <laughs> yes. So, um, yes, I'm glad that you told that story, Fabian, because that's very important to this. <laughs> uh, a, lot of, a lot of twig uh, happened after hours, and just putting in the extra effort to make this happen and make this a reality for everyone, and that's, that's a perfect example. So um, it's sort of, it's, it's adding a few things, but it's also taking away and simplifying. So we'll talk more about this later, but it's just, it's not jamming, most of this is just not jamming so much things in pre-process that don't really belong there. So anyway, we'll talk more about that later. And we do still need your help. Yeah, and if you now form API, you will kind of love it because it's very similar. Yeah, it is very much like form API. And uh, redundancy. And, and we ask around in Portland actually, and people were like, Hey, I get it, that's nice. <laughs> so we got positive feedback and so we continued with the initiative. Yeah, it's something, it's something that's familiar to a lot of developers already, so the structure. So redundancy, uh, this is a huge win that we get with Twig. Um, if you're creating node templates, for example, you have node article, you have node page, and you can get more specific than that, of course. In, ooh, ah. In Drupal 7, you would be forced to basically, well, the standard way anyway would be basically to copy your node template, but then you have to maintain four or 10 or 20 sets of the same markup just to change one part. Twig actually gives us real template inheritance. So you can say on the right side here where it says extends node.html.twig, we're just changing one part so it's, you actually have like a parent-child relationship and you can just change the one part you need to change. So all you do is you add the code block 
if you see on the left, there's code block footer uh, towards the bottom. All you do is you add that to your parent template. That allows you to override that bit in your child template, essentially. And the nice thing about this inheritance is it works exactly like class-based inheritance, um, and it's simulating that, and it's fast. It's the fastest uh, inheritance in Seeming Engine implements. And I, I think this is also nice because it, it sort of gives us justification for also reducing the amount of templates because I think previously the reason for creating all these little small atomic templates was, oh, well, what if you just want to change this one part? So that's not really an issue anymore. So I think that will also help us to uh, reduce the amount of templates. And again, sort of coming back to this, it's another part of redundancy that we have many things, templates and theme functions that output almost the exact same thing. And we want to consolidate them and use actual theme suggestions, which is something we've had in core for a long time, but we've never really leveraged it. So if you're creating an item list, and whether it's of users or tasks, we can just use the same template because you will still be able to override each of those on an individual basis if you need to. So for example, the middle one, you could say item-list-users.html.twig, and that would override just that, that bit of markup. And I will definitely pass security on to Fabian. <laughs> yeah, so, um, one thing about um, Twig here is that, um, especially in PHP template, you could write arbitrary PHP data. And if you've ever worked with a more complex theme um, that was kind of built um, by someone not yet familiar with the Drupal way of doing things, what you ended up with was a lot of business logic within the theme and template files and um, even MySQL calls, etc. So it would make things, you want to have a clear separation of presentation and business logic layer and there's nothing enforcing that in Drupal 7. And also what you could do in Drupal 7, more from a security standpoint, you could just print out uh, unserialized data. And um, there was even at one time a possibility for, um, there was a change from title to label, but if your uh, theme was still using the old way because it was kind of not yet adjusted to that change, then immediately you would have a cross-site scripting attack and Quora even had a bug here that allowed you to suddenly print out and sanitize data. Yeah. And so, and if it's, if it's hard for the experts to get it right, then it's even harder for the non-experts or those that should not be experts in security to get it right as well. Yeah, so basically what we're giving you is smart defaults out of the box so that you don't have to worry and lose sleep over this stuff. Um, so, and we do, we do still need help though in, in making auto escape a reality. Um, we have some work there, but again, we need, we need help. Uh, we're only a small team. <laughs> yeah. On the other hand, auto escape, um, it, it has been in a way also worth it to wait with auto escape until the entity API is stabilizing a little because we are now getting something completely different than we did three months ago. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Because there's so many changes, any auto escape implementation that we would have had before would probably have been changed by now. Yeah. And I love this because, oh. well, Jen, Jen made this slide, and when she was making it, she accidentally dropped her note table. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, this is sort of what that would look like in Twig, but it won't do anything. It'll just give you an error. It'll say, what is dbquery? I don't know what that is. So you can't even if you wanted to until some evil person makes a contrib module. Don't do that. But the person, <laughs> but it needs to depend on the bad judgment module. Has to. <laughs> so, getting all this, we do need to make some API changes. Um, of course, new template is definitely an API change. Sorry, new template engine. Uh, the new theme hooks, which I, I briefly mentioned, making everything renderable which we've already touched on a little bit, and markup utility functions, which are sort of evolving, and we're still sort of defining what that will be, because 
as we're developing this, we have people like Morton who are kicking the tires and seeing how this stuff actually works in practice. So we're trying to figure out as we go what, what tools are actually useful to themers. Um, and the markup utility functions is sort of falls under that category as well as the theme component library. So new template engine, uh, sorry, PHP template was our engine. It wasn't really an engine. It's technically still in Drupal 8, but that's because it's like 30 lines of code. 50. 50. <laughs> Not very much. Um, you can use it, but you won't want to because everything is going to be set up perfectly to work with Twig, and we'll have all of these lovely contrib themes that you guys can build. And it looks pretty. Look at that. Nice little twig. Uh, new theme hooks. Uh, I will pass this to on to Fabian as well, because this is sort of the brainchild. <laughs> <laughs> OK. So um, for the new theme hooks, um, kind of what we found was um, the old theme system was it was something um, that was very, very flexible. And it could do, let you do many, many things, but it couldn't let you do the things that you actually want to do. <laughs> so um, we kind of found um, we need a negotiation phase in which we kind of say, what will be the suggestions and what will be the um, templates we want to find? We want both themes and modules to define suggestions so that um, I can, um, for example, say, well, um, I see in my variables there's coming in the special, um, this special variable, and based on that, I want to do something. Um, they are, this is not yet in, but probably something, because it, it just makes sense. I would like to do it even more, just have a generic context I can check and pass over, and, um, but that's a little more in the future. But again, I can do based on some data, I can do pass a suggestion and I cr can create it. My prime example always is I have a map kind of like, and now someone's making a colored map. So um, then for the colored map, I want to add suggestions as well. Um, and so I can kind of get a kind of inheritance structure here. And um, the nice thing about the um, theme suggestions is that now I'm first adding my suggestions, but um, still my um, my default suggestion, which which I was called, would still be kind of the default one because there's still a way to kind of call directly pass a suggestion to the render array like item list underscore underscore user. Um, but now we are introducing a theme suggestion alter where again you can not only add things but you can also alter things. So if you want to say uh, even though this has been coming in with an item list underscore underscore users, I could still alter it and have it be my fancy users or whatever and I can kind of overwrite it all. And um, we are here now finally in our standard um, system like we have it in Drupal you create the things, you alter the things. And then the same is kind of happening for the prepare. We kind of already had a prepare on the prepare also stage, but it was named very weird. The prepare stage is kind of your template preprocess hook, and then your alter stage is your hook preprocess hook. And it's like, it wasn't clearly defined. And also what we couldn't do, we couldn't do a prepare or prepare alter on the suggestion we are getting. So again, if I have my colored map and I need to do any preparation, I can't do it directly. And um, in Drupal 7, it's even more complicated because it can't even get the suggestion it was called with. So I really can't do my colored map preparation in the way I wanted to do. And this new prepare call we are introducing is allowing to do, you, do that for you so you can, um, can get your preparation done, and afterwards you can again then alter it. But it depends on you if you want to add something or if you want to alter something, and um, that again is very powerful. And what's especially nice about the hook prepare is the uh, hook prepare um, underscore underscore. Uh, so hook prepare, for example, for a node, I could ha and I have a suggestion like node article. And um, so I could have a generic hook prepare, which is for running always. I could have a hook prepare underscore um, 
node, which is just running for nodes, but I can also have a hook prepare underscore node underscore uh, article or double underscore, and in that case, um, I get called also for the suggestion. So that's very similar to for hook form for my altar. It's kind of the exact same mechanism, and that will allow much flexibility in getting these things done. And afterwards, you can even alter on again the same three things. And and then after we're kind of done with that, then we kind of give that back to the Drupal render, and that can and then um, we are from the theme engine just um, rendering either um, our normal template or the negotiated template that was prepared in a different way. And that way we have finally all the control we need um, in the theme system here. Yay! Thank you, Fabian. <laughs> um, and it's it's sort of a little too early, but pre-process, I mean, you'll still have that tool, but the actual like hook pre-process might go away still. It, it sort of depends, but with with the prepare and prepare alter, you'll have all the same tools, and they'll probably be even more powerful if we can get uh, context available as well. So. And everything renderable, uh, we, we talked about this a little bit more. Um, here's some nice Legos. Uh, this lovely photo from Gabor. Um, which, oh, yeah, Legos. Um, so basically with renderables, um, there's many benefits. Uh, Fabian touched on like security for one. Um, the other thing too is that they're alterable. So we're not, that way you're not just dealing with a flat string that you can't do anything with. So we just pass these renderables, whether it's an array or an object, down, down the chain so that you can still hook into them later and alter them if need be. Because there's nothing worse than trying to update some certain piece of markup or some certain theme output and you're looking at a string of HTML and like, you're gonna do a regular expression on it? Like that's just not right. And markup utility functions. Uh, I'll actually, Fabian or Jen can jump on that too. Because as I said, that's that's sort of evolving okay. a little bit. So uh, markup utility functions come from a very simple need, and the need is inline templating. Um, what I want to be able to do is, I want, a link is probably too simple, but for a field or whatever, if I have any renderable, I want to be able to embed that within another template and I don't want to have a suggestion for everything I need. I just want to be able to create bigger templates which have kind of like inline templates but which still have my prepare stuff running. And um, I have a proof of concept now that allows you to kind of access, uh, access still the parent context so um, you can still kind of, if you have a node, you have still the node title, etc., available. But if then you are uh, rendering a list, then you can have this in this list. You can kind of um, get the same output as in the item list.html.twig. That will be very powerful in itself. But there's a problem. We removed theme link, for example. And now we are no longer, that's a good thing because it was a, a huge performance win. But there's something in Drupal 7 and Drupal 8 that's still a very big hack. Because if you're doing a type link, what happens is it defines a pre-render function. So at the time we are coming to the theme layer, the link is already rendered. And that's not changing if it's from a root or whatever, like in Drupal 8. That's a problem. Things shouldn't be rendered to mark up until the theme layer had a chance to kind of say, well, um, I don't have a default implementation for theme link. There are no suggestions. I'm early returning, and that's just one is set in the registry. It's very cheap. I think you can already now set an empty function, but it's not really defined in the registry. That's kind of where I'm still seeing. But on the other hand, Drupal pre-render link has to die. It needs to be a Drupal render link and or even a Drupal theme render link that's kind of, it's not a theme function per se because you don't want that, but you still want fast links or you still want fast whatever things 
fields or whatever that are just not fast enough for Twig to compile and doesn't really make sense to kind of bootstrap everything today, do uh, echo dollar content or print dollar content. It's like, does not make sense because it's so generic. Also for links, it does not make sense. It's so generic, but you still want, want to have a defined template so that you can, for example, do inline templating for a link or you can do, um, can, um, include your link in something and you can render pre-render your link and there's lots of things you can do but this Drupal pre-render that's a problem because pre-rendering to markup is is not going to work out and that's kind of to what markup utility functions now have evolved that f instead of Drupal pre-render link we need a Drupal render link and that's it and this is just and property within the render array as well but it can be overridden by the theme and if the theme has something, it gets called. If it doesn't have something, then the default fast implementation gets called. And that, again, gives you very much flexibility and um, possibilities while not sacrificing any speed in the Drupal, Drupal 8 core standard installation. Yeah. <laughs> what he said. <laughs> um, just one. Go ahead. I don't think my mic works, but anyways. Okay, um, <laughs> so one one thing on on this all the the getting rid of the theme, uh, the theme functions, making these markup utility functions, um, all of this. The goal in mind is is to give the themers something to wrap their markup around, so you get the raw data instead of a. Um, a string of HTML that's already there and you have to find out how to change it. So at the theme, at the template level, you have the access to the raw data and you should be able to change uh, what's around it, how it's going to be displayed on the screen. So you want like, uh, say your first name, last name, and you want to wrap it in a span tag. You got access to those raw data instead of the spanned already markup that you're getting. So that's kind of the overall idea of why we're doing this and why we're trying to put the, all this information is to give you access to the information and so you can change it at the le at one level instead of looking for it within Drupal. Yeah, it's you definitely get more flexibility. And then the theme component library, I think Jen is probably the best person to to talk about this one. So back when we started this whole crazy twig idea, um, we spent a couple of hours in a room trying to figure out like what the components we wanted to have were for theming. Like what are the, the pieces that you reuse all over the site? Um, and we completely failed at that exercise because we couldn't decide how small or how large the pieces should be. And so we've put the task aside for now and we started working on converting all of the stuff we've had in, in core and making sets of things that we see together. So when we see lists or when we see tables or when we see, for example, a, a thing that has a title and a content area, um, we start to see patterns emerge and that's helping us determine what our library of components should be. Um, we're gonna narrow all these things down. So instead of having four ways to do a list, we'll end up with one. Instead of having four ways to do a block with a title and a thingy or a div with a title and some content, um, we'll end up having one or two or a, a smaller subset. And then those things will be documented in a clear place that will say, these are the components that Drupal core includes. Um, you can get all of these little pieces and you can reuse them. And hopefully that'll make contrib module developers when they need to print out a div with a title and a thingy, instead of making their own div with a title and a thingy, which is how we do it now, um, they'll look at the list of components and say, hey, uh, there's a markup that I need. I'm just going to call that existing template. Maybe I'll give it a new um, uh, template suggestion. So if you wanted to override only that one, they'd be able to. Uh, so the theme component library right now is like a task to document what the components are in core. Um, we're still working through all of our conversions and consolidations, so we don't have a set yet but we will create one before Drupal 8 comes out just so that you have a list of things that are available and things that contrib developers should use. Um, this is something that won't ever be finished, right, as we go forward in time. Uh, contrib will come up with more patterns and we'll be able to create m more components that will end up included in core. And so it's an evolving list, like whatever the web decides to do with its components will end up getting in here at some point. So it's a, a, a wish list item that we're working hard to get towards. Yeah, and there's also been work um, for, and that's again connected to the um, markup utility functions work we, because we converted actually some things from theme back to type and types are actually already a very kind of, not granular enough, but they are already kind of 
like a kind of library of things for that. But now that we have that library, unfortunately, we cannot do anything anymore on the same layer with it. So that's kind of the problem. Yeah, so yay design patterns <laughs> and not repeating yourself 10 million times. Uh, okay, and also you win. Uh, so we're going to talk about some of the benefits from uh, mostly Twig and I think partially the, the new sort of theme layer, theme architecture as well. So these, these were things that we didn't know we were getting into when we first started <laughs> down the path to Twig. Yeah, and well, the more we started using Twig and converting stuff, the more stuff we just discovered that we got for free by using Twig. Yeah. So extra bonus. Free stuff. So um, template inspection, variable inspection, the possibility of using the same templates on the front end and the back end because they're not PHP. Um, and then some more possibilities basically for contrib. Well, that would be contrib too, but um, being able to edit templates in the browser and having the code and UI talk to each other. So more about these in a second. So template inspection. This is one of the first things I worked on as part of the Twig initiative and I thought, this is awesome. I, I didn't, well, I didn't really write the code, I wrote tests, but I helped get it in. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Um, so basically, this is like Devel themer, but in your web inspector. So you view source, or however you do it, inspect, and you will see for each little bit of markup what, was the, what theme function or template was called, and you'll be able to see what other possible templates can I use for this particular case. So this is great because there's no more hunting down where do I override that certain bit of markup? You can see it. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> <laughs> so this is just a toggle, the little bit at the top, settings twig debug equals true. This is just a little toggle in your settings.php. And twig debug also turns on twig auto reload, which automatically recompiles your templates because twig compiles these templates to disk so that they're fast. So as soon as you turn on Twig Debug, like basically when you're developing your theme, you're going to have Twig Debug on. So you see all this wonderful stuff. And when you save your template, it automatically gets regenerated. So big win. Yes, the X is the one that is currently used. So yay for that. And also, I should probably just call this out. It gives you the full path to the actual template that's being used, so you can just you don't have to hunt for it. You can find that file and just copy it into your theme. Woohoo! So. <laughs> and then we also want to do variable inspections so that you don't have to, I mean, you can do this already. You can just use dump. But we basically want to give you like um, something like Crumo but nicer uh, so that you can actually see what variables are available like within the context of your template what variables are available, but not the stuff you don't care about as a themer. Because right now, if you're trying to deal with the render arrays of doom from Drupal 7, <laughs> all the stuff you want is in there. But there's also a bunch of stuff that you don't care about, and you have a really hard time wading through all the stuff you don't care about to find stuff you do care about. Yeah. So we want to build you something that'll be like, here's what you want, and then you can kind of figure out from what you want what you want to print on the page without having to look at all the stuff you don't want. Yeah, it'll tell you what you want, what you really, really want. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I went there. That, that's another um, big selling point for Twig because we have dynamic extensions so you can extend it. So um, even if the variable inspector might not make it into the quality in core that we would like it, there's nothing from hindering a contrib module for just defining a Twig t extension and then they can kind of provide the DPM methods, etc. and that would all kind of automatically work. And um, so this is very nice. So Twig gives you a lot of flexibility. If you need anything extended, um, you can do that. Yeah, that's, that's a great point. Um, and this is one thing that we sort of researched and found. We've, we haven't tried this. Uh, we hope that someone does. 
Uh, but there's things out there on GitHub and elsewhere. Like there's a whole ecosystem around Twig that we're just jumping into and hopefully we can participate in as a community. But there's, for example, there's Twig.js, which could give us the possibility of using the same templates, like say for a node or something. Um, not only in Drupal, but something else, some kind of backend Jack JavaScript library like Backbone or something like that. Again, we haven't tried this, but maybe you can. Maybe someone can make a module. And then um, in browser template editing, um, I will pass that on to Jen or whoever wants to take it. So, how many <laughs> people have heard of the the contemplate or the content template module, and maybe even like admit to using it? <laughs> right. Maybe like, well, it was Drupal five. Like, I didn't know any better, right? I, I used it. I must admit. Um, this is one of these modules that exists because people need it or people want it. They think they need it. You want to just be able to find the template file, make a change, and hit save and be done with it without having to worry about all of the other stuff that goes along with that. Um, unfortunately, when your templates are full of PHP code, um, finding the template and saving it, at least the way Contemplate does into the database, is a big problem. Um, it's a problem for security reasons, and anyone who has access to edit your uh, Contemplates can put in you know, SQL things and drop your node table if they wanted to, for example. <laughs> um, but also it's a problem because if you don't exactly know what you're doing with PHP and you forget like a closing PHP tag or a semicolon, your whole site explodes. And you have to then manually go dig through your database and find where that thing was stored so that you can clear it out. I've actually done this, again, <laughs> not to admit anything, um, to find the problem and get rid of it. It's just like a, a dangerous thing. Um, it's, it's also dangerous to take these files and save them to the disk. There's just like a lot of issues with, with in-browser PHP editing. But if the template files aren't made of PHP code anymore, a whole bunch more opportunities come up, especially with something that can be like parsed and checked ahead of time and validated. And, and now you can, you're like, oh, well, okay, I can edit these files in the browser. I can save them. You can have them export. You can, there's lots of potential here for taking this contemplate module and turning it into something that's good and usable and wholesome. I, yeah, we can check the syntax before it goes live on your site, which is probably quite helpful. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is, um, with Contemplate, it was loading from the data, uh, database, and um, again, you might have there a bottleneck and have problems kind of because you need to run the PHP in memory so it's not cached. We are other caching mechanism, it was just flow. And the advantage here again of trick is you can pass it to string, you can pass it something from a database, from the universe somewhere, or wherever your source is coming from, in the end your trick template is compiled to disk and then cached and uploaded from there and that's very fast. Yeah, so this this won't be in core again. This these are possible contrib toys. So if anyone's feeling inspired, uh, see in the coder lounge. <laughs> and this is probably another one I'll I'll pass to these fine people. Uh, two way communication between the code and the UI, or I guess making the UI not lie. So how how many of you have um, had a custom theme? and you've gone into the theme settings and you've done something like tried to disable the logo or turn on the site name and realize that your theme didn't care about that setting, right? Um, we've always had this problem in Drupal where there's user interfaces that have settings and there's code that can choose to pay attention to the settings or not. Um, and there's always this debate about like, well, who wins? Does the setting win or does the code win? And the code is always won. Um, but we're finally in a place where because we're parsing these files ahead of time, we can check in the file to see whether the file is going to pay attention to that setting or not and do something really clever like disable the setting if it's not going to be used. So because we're parsing the files ahead of time, we can make some smart changes about the user interface. So initially we're like, yeah, no, no broken UIs, this is great. But then we're like, wait, 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 l let's take this a little bit further. If the system can be aware of the code, can't we just write our template files first? Okay, okay. That's something that people have been wanting in Drupal for forever, right? You don't want to pull a template file out of somewhere in some module and like write around it. You want to write your own markup, right? You guys awake? <laughs> <laughs> this is like a huge, huge, huge thing. Okay, anyway. So if you could write, if you wanted to write your markup, you could write your markup in, in theory, right? We don't have, this doesn't work yet. Yeah. But you could write a template file and if you knew the names of your fields and you knew the names of your blocks, you could put them in the thing and you could put your template file into your Drupal site and then your Drupal site would build itself. Right? <laughs> Maybe? It, 
could happen. <laughs> Anything is possible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I actually, I, that part is still blowing my mind so much, even though we've been talking about it for months, that I, I forgot to even sort of mention it when I was segueing. So, yeah, wow. <laughs> that could be great, but we need someone to build it, or a, a group of people, or an army. And again, you can help us get there. Twig is in core. It's not going anywhere. But there's so much more we can do. So this is sort of a short list of what we're working on. We're, we are working on those theme system architecture changes, those little blue, box, blue boxes that you saw. We're working on trying to convert all or as many as we can theme functions to templates so that you don't have to take all that theme function PHP and copy it in your, into your theme. We want to get rid of that. And we also want to have less templates, consolidate, get rid of stuff. And we want to clean up markup. And that's where you guys can really help, too. Uh, if you don't even know PHP, but if you know your markup, you know your HTML and your front end stuff, you can join Mark Morton. And he is, he's like, he's taken time off from client work to get your markup nice and shiny and clean. So I think the least you can do is help him out, <laughs> right? So come to the Sprint on Friday and uh, help us out and uh, get rid of, well, like Drupal is kind of known for Divitis, right? So let's change that, right? And we can clean up pre-process too. So uh, the Twig initiative is sort of special, initiatives in quotes, because it's not one of the big six, you know, ones that Dries talked about this morning. It's sort of an underdog, if you will. And it's brought along many new contributors, uh, myself included. And as it turns out, you know, all the Twig templates that got committed in Portland, there were so many new names working on those issues that no one had heard of. And they just, they saw that there was a place where they could jump in and help, and they did so. So again, you guys can help, and, and we can really use your help. So, <laughs> so come to the Sprint on Friday. Um, we have tasks for every skill set. We have mentors uh, like myself and Joelle will be there. Um, and if you have never contributed to Core, you can come in the morning. There's a community tools workshop where we'll get you set up with a local development environment and IRC and all these good things. Make sure you have an account on, on Drupal.org and basically get you all primed up and ready. And then you can go into the sprint in the afternoon ready to rock. And uh, there's also Drupal mentoring tweet stuff and yeah so come to the sprint uh, again come to the sprint uh, there's also more sprints on the weekend we meet every week on Thursdays we do a Google Hangout uh, join us anytime online 24 7 in hash Drupal dash twig on IRC and also for the adventurous among you start building your Drupal 8 themes and let us know how it goes it's still a little bit early but we could really use your feedback like I said there's not a lot of people kicking the tires so if you're sort of an early adopter, or if you're feeling brave, just start building something. And if there's something that you find is really missing, let us know, create an issue, and so on. And we also want to mention, if this is your area, if you're a themer, check out all the other amazing talks about Twig and the theme system. Uh, tomorrow morning, uh, Fabian Potentier, the guy who, who, is, who basically wrote the Twig template engine, is doing a talk. Uh, that is tomorrow morning at 10.45 AM. And uh, a bunch of us folks are doing a, and Morton, are doing a, well, especially Morton, really, <laughs> are doing a Twig It, Ship It, aka the Twig Lab. That is tomorrow at 1 p.m. And that will be a lot of fun, so come to that. And uh, if you're sort of, if you want to talk to us more, uh, there's a boff Thursday, 2.15 p.m. So, yeah. I'll turn it over to questions now. And I believe there are a couple mics over there. So if you just want to, that way we get it on the uh, recording too. I think the biggest use of functions and templates is the T function. How do you handle that with Twig? Uh, come to the Twig lab. We will tell you exactly. It's uh, 
we have a T filter, and then we also have a trans block, and it's we have nice, really clean ways of doing translation. We have a wonderful, really, really wonderful trans extension. Um, it didn't make it on the slides, but it will be in the yeah. Twig Lab, so there's more for you to explore. Um, yeah. But it is really wonderful because instead of writing all these placeholders and having to deal with all these very long strings with markup attached, what you do is you're writing like your normal markup and you're just adding a hash trans and you're starting your trans block. You can set the context, etc., for the language thing. And then it will automatically create the T function for you. And that's uh, the really genius thing about it. And you can ju then just use your node, dot, node NID, et cetera, and you can just use your normal variables, and it will then automatically convert those into placeholders and replace them, and uh, trans extension is awesome. So you don't need that ugly array syntax thing that we have now when you use the T function if you want to pass variables in. It's really slick. Yeah, great question. Um, I'm just going to steal the microphone for like two minutes and then actually uh, talk a little bit about what we're going to do tomorrow in the Twig Lab. Actually, let me do a... Yeah, come on up. <laughs> um, so I'm not one of them who actually codes the PHP. I'm just being the angry man in the end, which these fine uh, young people deliver the stuff to. Um, so what I did a couple of weeks ago, I began to actually build a theme and find all the errors and figure out where we're at right now. Um, and what I'm going to do tomorrow is going to do a demonstration of all of these things. So uh, about all of the questions that comes out of this is actually going to be shown, not in direct live code because I'm not that brave. Um, it's going to be screenshots and a little bit of pieces of code. Um, but it's going to be based on the way a front-end developer looks at a theme. So if you're a PHP nerd, um, we'll give you a half an hour at the end where you can do your stuff. But the first hour will be dedicated to pure front-end love. Um, WebCheck introduced a new new word about uh, the, no, the developer experience. Um, I'm introducing a new one that's called the front end experience, because that's a, that's a very very important thing for us. Um, the the thing we've been hold back on for a couple of years now in in Drupal is not so much working with PHP, but it's just been ugly. It's not how front end work. It's it's this um, piece of fucking shit that none of us want to work with. Um, and I want to change that. And that's one of the things we're also going to talk about tomorrow, all of these principles we're building on. It, this is not only about changing you know, a variable to something with two brackets on. This is also changing the way we're thinking theming. Um, and the only one who can define that is us. That is, if you're a front-end developer or theme or whatever you call you, I want to have you in that lab because I need your opinion on this. And I really need help because I used to, I used to bash John Alpin for Drupal 7's um, lack of finesse. Um, he now passed that torch down to me, and if I'm the only one, you're all going to suffer from my bad judgments. <laughs> you don't want to do that. That's, that's insane. So tomorrow at 1 o'clock, we're going to do that lab. We're going to have a buff after that. And even that you don't know how to contribute to core, I actually need opinions upon these things. I need people who can give feedback. Because um, a lot of the questions, right now we're trying to kill the, uh, the JS classes. So everything that JavaScript want to put in, um, as a class in your body field or your node or so, or so forth. I want to take that stuff and put that out as a data attribute. I'm not sure that's a good idea or a bad idea. I need somebody to help me out with it. And, and here's another thing. All the backend developers, they're not paying attention to the front end right now. This is now we're going to get it done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Morton. Next question. Yeah, um, this is for Jen. Okay. Can you... Please repeat the last feature you were talking about, the, the one you, you get angry for. I'm, the, I'm sorry. The, the uh, theoretical feature? Yeah. Um, oh. Okay. So uh, in Drupal land right now, the way you normally create your markup is you go and find some template that's generated somewhere else, usually in core, and you copy it into your theme and you change it a little bit. And this makes most front-end developers really grumpy because they don't want to work within the fines of that existing template. They want to write their own template. They want to write their own markup from scratch. But then what happens is you don't know what variables to put in it, right? So then you have to go dig around in Drupal and figure out what the variables are and put them in. But if we could give you a list of um, here are the 16 variables you're going to need to put into your node template, and you could write your template and feed it into your Drupal site, drop it into your theme. Like, for example, you're doing a layout for a page and you put your block one on the top and block two on the bottom and block three in the footer, however you want it in your content in the middle of the page. If, you, if your site could read that template file, 
it could write configurations based on your template file that position those blocks in those places for you. So we have the ability to do that now. We just don't have any code that does it. So it's just the kind of thing where you know you could do the same thing with, with the field UI, right? If you're doing a node template and you're laying out the way your nodes should appear, you say, okay, well, these fields go in this order. Your website can read that in and write a config file for the order of those fields. Um, so it's just a, a new way to build Drupal sites in theory. <laughs> um, but we don't, we don't have anyone working on it right now. It's just something that I feel like if we had that, no one would ever want to theme anything else. So, so um, that just gave me an idea. So anyone that wants to start on that um, <laughs> would need to write a little trick extension, and um, which would kind of be in Symfony we have sub requests, in Drupal we don't have them, but that doesn't mean we can't emulate something like that. So we would kind of have something like a render function again, like, and then I want to render a block with a block ID that could at this point already work. Um, because what we can do in Trick is we can, because we know the syntax and we can pass the syntax, we can kind of collect all rendered things by parsing the template once without rendering anything. Then we collect everything, doing our block list, and we have a dynamic region. So it could work not only in theory, but also in practice. See, see, <laughs> it's coming in the sprint. <laughs> right. All right, we got three people. We're gonna work on that on Friday. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my question is, uh, is it possible to use uh, Twig syntax for content editing? I mean something like Markdown or Wiki syntax, but much more powerful, using uh, all the power of filters and tags and so on. Uh, is it possible? Yes. There's actually a Drupal 7 module that does that already that provides an input filter or text filter uh, that uses the Twig syntax. Um, it's not anything that we're focused on in, in Drupal 8 because we're working on actually the, the theme system using Twig, not the <coughs> content itself using Twig, but it's definitely possible and there are people already doing it. Oh yeah, thank you. Uh, this is probably going to come off as a little bit of a straw man uh, but I, I do get how amazing the new Twig uh, templating system is uh, for Drupal 8, and I get why I would want to use it and why it's so fantastic. I mean, it really is. I mean that quite sincerely. But I've built and maintained and maintain a lot of sites on various older versions of Drupal, um, including especially 7, and they all have these old themes running on them. And my question <laughs> is, of course, this seems like it's going to be a lot of work that I have to go in and convert every single one of these themes over um, to Twig. And I'm wondering if there isn't a way that could save me a lot of work on that. So if you come to the lab tomorrow, um, we will actually have a demonstration how hardcore nerds through their terminal, you know, that, that thing that's black only with green text on, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm beginning to learn what it is. It's, it took me some time. There's a magic thing you can do. You can Twigify your old PHP template theme, and it will give, be magically done. There will maybe be a demo of that tomorrow. No, there actually will be. And it's, pr it's pretty amazing. Wow. Great question. <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> All right, and finally, before you uh, head out, or, or if you just want to stay in chat, um, we're, we are to tell you to take a survey. I, I'm, we're not sure if it's working. I guess try later, maybe. <laughs> but tell us how we did. Um, hopefully, you learned some new things and learned about the new toys that you're going to get. Tweet Soon. about it. Have fun. Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen the Portland reviews, how was it?